You want to know the best part about not taking updates from Samsung? My phone was previously rooted, but if I took it in for support, they would never know that it's rooted because I never updated to 4.3 and I never will accept any updates on any of my Samsung devices ever because I'm still on the old bootloader even though I have 4.3 everything else. And now it's being rooted with CF Auto Root. <laughs> I, as soon as it said pass on the computer, I mean, I bolted up here where my camera and my recording table and everything is all set up. And now I'm rooting this sucker with CF Auto Root since it had 4.1.2 on it, and I'm rooted. Okay, so <laughs> officially this video is going to be on how to install CyanogenMod 11 on the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. This will work on any variant of the Galaxy Note 2 that is supported by CyanogenMod, which is a lot of them. I'll have a link to all of them that I know of in the description below. And you can follow along with this video. Do, um, doesn't matter which version you have. Uh, two things is uh, for the custom recovery, you want to make sure you're downloading the custom recovery for your device. Um, for Sanjuman 11, you'll want to make sure you're downloading Sanjuman 11 for your device. Like, this is the T-O-L-T-E-S-P-R or something like that. Um, I can't remember the code name off the top of my head. And, like, if you have VZW, you'll do VZW. If you have uh, Cricket's CRI, um, ATT's ATT, T-Mobile's TMO. Uh, so you can follow along no matter which version you have. We're going to go ahead and update our Super SU by clicking on here and it doesn't say there's an update available so we will go ahead and just uh i have paid for the pro version so i'm gonna go ahead and install that too and you'll also want to download an app called recovery tools it is made by dsl nexus and we're going to go ahead and press install accept and you're going to need to download the recovery and how you'll do that is you'll open up the uh, since it doesn't come with that, we'll just use the stock one for now. And we'll need to go bit.ly slash fill Z. Uh, you'll see how I type it in a second. So it's bit.ly slash capital P, uh, lowercase h-i-l, capital Z, and then press go. And that'll bring you to the main forum where from here you will find your device. He supports many devices, HTC, Google, LG, uh, the Oppo Find 5. I can't wait for the Oppo Find 7. We're definitely getting that when it comes, <laughs> as soon as we possibly can when it releases. So this is the Galaxy Note 2. Uh, we'll be installing CM11 on the Galaxy Note 3. So um, for those of you that are, you know, waiting very anxiously, they did release Synge Mod 11 um, for the Galaxy Note 3, but it's unofficial. Uh, Nubinel is the maintainer. He's posting them up on the XDA thread, but they're not on GitCM yet. When they are on GitCM, I will trip Nox on my Note 3 uh, since it came with 4.3 and Nox by default. I avoided Nox on here. I avoided Nox on my S3, on my S4, and my Note 2 by not installing the OTA. And I recommend to you to never again install an OTA. Custom ROMs always update and support newer builds. You can download a pre-rooted stock ROM without the bad stuff in it. Anyways, uh, let's get back on track. So this recovery supports the N7100, N7102, N7105, uh, the Sprint version, the L900, which is what we're using right now. And it has the LTE Verizon, the SCH i605. Um, and then the AT&T, the T-O-T-0-L-T-E-A-T-T, and then the TMO. So those are the recoveries. Um, alternatively, you can download Clockwork Mod or Twerp. I really like Twerp, but lately this recovery's been working well for me, and I like it, so I've just been using it. So uh, let's go with the Sprint version. Again, if you have Verizon, make sure you choose the one for your device. Uh, this is a little bit redundant because when you do this, it's going to take you to the XD thread. And then there's going to be a goo.im link. Once this loads, TouchWiz is so freaking slow. You're going to love it when you get Sanjuman on your device. Uh, on, my note, on my S4 video on how to install CM11, everything was just lagging and going really, really slow. And then once I had CM11 on it, everybody was able to see just how quickly things were happening when I was pressing on them. So... Sanj mod is so much faster than um, stock. So here again, there's the L900. You'll just go down here until you find the T, 
where it t t o l t e t o l t e a t t t m o. So I don't know why they chose to go with L900 for the sprint version, but they did. So we're gonna go ahead and press on that. And then you need to download, uh, you can either download the TAR MD5. If your device is not rooted, then you need to download the TAR MD5. You need to open up Odin 307. Um, at, at, that's the one I use and it works for me. And you need to flash um, that recovery TAR to your phone using Odin. Now our device is rooted using CF Auto Root and we don't have custom recovery at the moment. So we need to download this one right here. And when it counts down and finishes, this is going to be a zip file. You can use anything. You can use uh, Z Archiver. You can download 7-Zipper. You can download... Um, th there's a bunch of different tools in the market that will open up a zip file. So uh, in this situation, we're going to go ahead and download Root Explorer. It is a $4 app, but I love it. It's awesome. And we're going to go ahead and install it. And we have a bunch of apps updating, so unfortunately... Um, we need to go ahead and stop these. All right, that one was already downloaded most of the way, so we'll go ahead and let that finish. All right, so the root explorer is done. We're gonna go ahead and press on this fills touch Z. It's gonna open up in root explorer. I'm gonna grant it super user permission, and there's the recovery.img. We need to press this little button right here, and then press this button, and it's going to take it, extract it, and when it's done here. We're going to go to extracted, we're going to press on this, we're going to hit cut, and then we're going to go parent, parent, and then there's our SD card, so we'll move it there. And then we're going to go back, and we're going to go to that new app that we downloaded called Recovery Tools. Um, again, you have to have root to use this. If you don't have root, you need to download that tar MD5, and you need to flash that in Odin. I'm going to hit, I know the risk, because I do not have recovery at all at the moment. CF Auto Root does not install recovery on your device, so you can accept OTA updates, which again, um, <laughs> I do not recommend flashing them anymore. So we're going to go all the way down until we see recovery image. Yes, please. And that's going to flash the recovery that I recommend using, and then hit no thanks. Um, before you do that, make sure you download any text messages or um, download an app called Titanium Backup. I paid for the pro version and I highly recommend it. If you're not sure whether the $7 app's worth it for you, watch the video that's linked in the Play Store. I, it's basically a very long video running down most of the things you can do with Titania Backup and it's definitely worth it. SMS Backup and Restore, it is a very good app by R-I-T-E-S-H-S-A-H-U. It's a very, very good app. Um, I've used this on multiple devices. I actually use Google Voice myself. I have been since like 2009 or eight. And I, I don't have my messages stored on my device. I use the Google Voice app, and it's all online based. I can, I don't even need my phone to read and reply to people's text messages. I love it. Okay, so the app's done. We're gonna go ahead and press on it, and then uh, press OK, and then OK. And you'll want to hit backup, and then you'll want to choose external storage card. Um, you can do internal if you don't have an external card, like a eight gig or sixteen, thirty-two, whatever. But I highly recommend putting it on your external just because it's it's a safer storage if you accidentally wipe your internal storage or something, which is possible, or the recovery. Um, uh, <laughs> Couch has been known to release recoveries that when you're trying to do one thing, it does something else. So uh, external, uh, this is not Couch's recovery. Uh, this is Phil, I guess, his name. He just basically built it off of there and added a bunch of enhancements and features and stuff. So anyways, external storage, press OK, and then press OK again. And your, all your messages will be stored on your SD card. And then you can just go here to restore and then locate them and restore them. It's beautiful. It's awesome. Uh, and you can also, if you, um, as far as contacts goes, you can open up the phone and then press the menu button and choose export. And then I would choose both options, like the USB storage and the SD card, just so you make sure you have it backed up properly. That's just, some people have contacts stored on their device and not on their Google account. I've ran into that problem multiple times when flashing family members and friends' phones. They had their contacts on their phone, and when I installed CyanogenMod, they lost all their contacts. So make sure your messages and your call, log, call logs and everything are on your uh, SD card. So, uh, Titania Backup Pro, um, we're going to open it up. We're going to grant it root permission here. 
if it says something about restoring an ID, hit restore. Otherwise, you will. In, otherwise, you'll encounter issues with apps that. Re, otherwise, you'll encounter issues with apps that required the previous. In, otherwise, you'll run into issues with apps that required previous, you know, Android IDs. It knows that this Android ID is different from this one, so it thinks you changed devices or something, and it will not restore the data properly. So hit restore. I don't care because um, I'm flashing this phone and I don't this is not my daily phone my Nexus 5 is my daily phone that I use and love to death so in here we're gonna hit this little batch button and we're gonna choose backup all user apps and then we're gonna hit the checkbox and it's gonna back up all of your stuff and it's going to put it on your SD card now if it's putting on putting it on your internal storage open up my files go to all files go to SD card and if you find a titanium backup folder in here you want to press on it and you'll want to choose move. I'm just using this as an example. And then you'll want to go to your external SD card and move here. I highly recommend doing that because it'll put all of your backups on your SD card. And then when you're in Cyanjamod, you'll just, or it's, I'm sorry, when you're in Titania Backup, you'll just hit menu, preferences, um, backup folder location, detect, whole device. And it'll say like SD card one or something. And you'll press on that and use current folder and when you back out and then you reload titanium backup all of your backups will permanently be oh screw, will permanently be on your external storage and it'll say right there like external storage or sd card one i just don't want you losing your important backups that's just why i'm saying that so you backed up your apps you backed up your uh your contacts, you backed up your messages, which I think backup will also back up your messages by going to backup data to XML. And then you'll choose any of these options right here. You can choose all four or just one, for example, save locally, save. And again, you'll want to go to that my files. And you'll want to go to that messages thing uh, and then go move and then take it and put it on your external SD card and move there. Again, it's just so you make sure that you don't lose anything important. So now that we have custom recovery, now that we've backed up everything, we can install the ROM. So I'm gonna go ahead and power the device off. Okay, and when the device is off, you'll hold volume up, the home button, and the power button down. On the, most phones, you can let go once you see recovery booting, but on this one, you need to keep holding it until you're actually in your recovery. I think that if you let go, it, it will, there we go. So this is what the recovery looks like. I'm gonna put an annotation up, but before you wipe, you actually want to go to backup and restore. And then you wanna choose like, if you want the backup to go on your internal storage, which I don't recommend, choose SD card. If you want to go to your external SD card, which is the one that's you know underneath the back of the phone, you'll wanna go with SD card one. If you want it to go on this little flash drive right here, well, this little SD card that you, that's right here you choose USB uh, disk zero or whatever it says so back up and once you do it takes a really long time um, depending on how much data you have it'll basically make a backup of your phone if you decide that CM11 isn't ready yet because it is a nightly as of this video but it could become um, it will become more stable in the future uh, you may decide CM11 is not for you something that you really needed with TouchWiz like uh, activating your phone or swapping service or something uh, you could go back to what you had if you made a backup by going to restore from and then choosing wherever you restored it from I forgot to include the part on how to back up your phone. A backup is not mandatory, but it is recommended. So that's why it's jumping back and forth like that. You're going to need to go to wipe data factory reset, clean. Well, sorry about that. Wipe data factory reset, clean to install a new ROM. Yes, I want to install a new ROM. And by the way, I don't care what recovery you're using. Yours will look different from this one, but I recommend using this one. I haven't ran into any issues with it yet. And it... I haven't ran into any issues with it yet, and it works very well. So uh, let's press the back button, and then you can choose install zip, and you'll want to have the G apps, you'll want to have, uh, and Cyanjumon as well. You can also download SuperSU in advance and have that on your SD card ready to go. So I'm gonna sh tell you about that here in a second. Anyways, so SD card one, as you can see, I have the CM11 and the G apps. I actually, 
just like a lot of my videos, instead of loading the ROM on the SD card, which I only did that because I've gotten some comments on my HTC One S3, S4 videos where people are like, uh, I don't have one of these little guys, I can't flash that ROM. I just showed you that I put it on my SD card one and I'm gonna plug this in. It's gonna light up and in just a second here, it's going to uh, say that it's mounted. Sweet. I have a video and I'll link to it in the description if you wanna purchase this. Basically, I just take this little SD card, I plug it into my computers, I transfer the files I need onto it and then I take this and I plug it in the bottom of my phone. It's so much faster than, like, you might have a case like this. This is my extended battery on my Note 3. And it would take, like, a month to pull this case off, pull the back off, put the battery, pull the battery out, get to my SD card. It would, well, you don't have to pull the battery out, but whatever. It would just take a long time to get to my SD card when I can quickly just plug this little guy into the bottom of it and be on my way. So we're going to go to install since we just wiped. We're going to go ahead and press back and then install zip. And that zip is on the USB disk zero right here. And then we're going to choose CM11 Nightly L900. Again, if you have the T-Mobile version, make sure yours says TMO. Uh, if you have Verizon, make sure it says VZW. Uh, just make sure you're flashing the correct one for your phone. The Sprint version is the L900. Sorry about notifications. It just keeps going mad crazy. I just need to mute my phone, but... Um, it's my wife texting me, so, <laughs> uh, CM11, it's installing, and it's done, but you're not done just yet. You need to go back to install and wherever you put it at, and then you need to go to the G apps, and as of this video, the best G apps are, well, dang, they're not even on the SD card. That was a fail on my part. Um, you'll need, uh, SD card one is where I have them. And then you'll need to go to the G apps, KK 2013-12008. If there are better ones, um, newer ones, I will try to, I'll do my best to update the description with those newer G apps. But as of this video, 2013-1208 is the one that you need to flash. And then yes, install zip. And this will take just a minute. It's 100 megabytes, but it doesn't take that long. And we're done. So we are good to go. We can go ahead, go back, and then choose Reboot System Now. And once it's done, you can unplug this little guy if you, you know, purchased it and used it for this video or whatever. This thing's awesome because I can use it on my a Nexus 5. I can put the files on my Nexus 5, Nexus 7, Note 2, Note 3, S3, S4. I can have all the files I need on this one guy and then keep plugging this into all the different phones and or tablets and I can if I if same 11 has an update I can put all the versions of same 11 on this thing and just keep plugging to the bottom of all the devices and updating them without worrying about like having extended batteries and all this crazy stuff everywhere that I'm taking off uh, just taking a minute to start up here uh, this is kind of the nervous part where you're like did it flash did it screw up? What the heck happened? Awesome! We have CM11 on our Samsung Galaxy Note 2. Please keep in mind that the first startup always takes a while. After that, it will be much faster. All right, the screen just went dim, and whenever that happens, you know that it's starting to boot up. Uh, if for some reason you're stuck on that forever and it never leaves it, Manually go into recovery by the power button, volume up, and the home button, and choose factory reset. For whatever reason, that may fix it. Do not press clean to install a new ROM unless you plan on reflashing mod. Just do the wipe to factory reset. So, we're in the United States, uh, at least I am, so I'm going to hit United States. And then, you'll need a mod account. You can either create one or log into one. I have one, so I'm going to go ahead and log into it. You can already see right here that we have the different keyboard than the stock one. The beautiful thing about Android is you can install a Swift key. You can install any keyboard that you prefer. I love Swift key. That's that's what I install immediately after doing Science Mod. All right, so after you log in, you'll press the login button if your password's correct and your email's correct. It'll bring you to the screen. Just hit yes, I have Google. Obviously, if you don't, press no. All right, log into your Gmail account. It's going to ask you if you want to restore it. I do recommend choosing restore because it'll restore all the Wi-Fi access points and um, just everything. I uncheck this because I get enough emails as it is. And now it's going to take a few minutes to restore this. 
All right, it's done. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. And then you're gonna choose your time zone here. I am central time. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit next and then setup is completed. So hit finish. Uh, Launcher 3, as far as I'm aware, is not an official name yet. If you install this in the future and it's Launcher 4 or um, something different, you'll just know that this is the um, Science Mod Launcher because it'll have like the DSV Manager, Apollo, all the Science Mod stuff on here. So we're gonna go ahead and press home. And I'm gonna go with the stock KitKat launcher, or you can download like Nova Launcher if you prefer that one. And uh, I'm just gonna hit always, so every time I press home, it goes to this one. So press okay, okay, and this is the thing. So we'll do like, okay Google, what is Eminem's real name? Eminem's full name is Marshall Bruce So the okay Google thing's working. And <laughs> stop listening to me. Uh, it seems like everything's fine. Now, the installation's done. Uh, if that's all you came here to see, good for you. But uh, if you like my videos and you want to stick around, please do so. The first things I do when I get signed to mod, that's basically what this part of the video is about, is I bring down this, and you'll notice that this is the quick toggles. You can press on like brightness, and you can quickly turn the brightness up and down. Or you can like uh, long press on the Wi Fi to. Um, to connect to your network or something. You can just long press on any of these settings to get to their corresponding thing. Like with a torch, you can see that it li it's lighting on my table. So, and you can add these, you can edit these, you can remove some, it's completely customizable. Bringing down this side is your notifications. So um, that's that. I don't like that because a lot of times I hold my phone like this and I'm swiping down and I'm like, I don't want to get to this screen. I want to get to my notifications. So how to change that is to go to settings, interface, quick settings panel, quick pull down, choose off. And now when you bring down from the right side, that's your notifications. Bring down from your left side, that's still your notifications. And if you want to get to your quick toggles, you can just press this and turn stuff on and off. Or you can alternatively hold uh, do both fingers and bring it down and it takes you to that and something pretty cool with science mod is if these stats are incorrect you can just hit this little delete button and it deletes the stats and you start out with brand new stats so that's something i found out pretty recently and i really like it and you can just go through here and dig through stuff and change stuff that you like what i also do is go to status bar and then with the i choose the circle and then I choose to show the percentage. So that way it says I have like 81% and I know exactly how much battery is in my phone. I freaking love it. Double tap to sleep, uh, brightness control. Basically you're supposed to bring this down and control your brightness. Um, people say that you can put the phone to sleep by double tapping the status bar. We're gonna try that. Um, just go up here. Okay, so the phone just went to sleep and we can wake it up with the home button. And we can just double tap up here and it puts it to sleep. That's pretty cool. Shout out to everybody that left comments saying how to do that. And that's it for that. I do recommend going down here to about phone and then going to build number and keep tapping on this. And also while you're in here, you can see that we are on, you can update your baseband to the newest like MK, whatever it is. Um, I don't, I don't remember. There's too many things to keep track of. We are on Android 4.4.2. As you can see right there. Okay, so not fooling around. I was just having fun with the Android 4.4.2. So uh, go to About Phone, go to the build number, keep tapping on that. As you saw, it says no need. We already have developer options. Now there's this new option there that wasn't there before. I'm sure a lot of you already know that, but for those of you that are new to this, that's how you do it. Uh, advanced Reboot is where, like, if you choose Reboot, you'll see that you only have one option. That's, well, two, I guess. Uh, okay or cancel if you hit advanced reboot and you hold down the power button You'll actually be able to choose to reboot into recovery mode to flash a zip or something Which we'll do here in a second and then download mode Which is like the bootloader and then you can go in here and change all this I recommend setting root access to disabled some people see that and then they're like Well, how do I do anything with that's root my phone's gonna say it's not rooted um, and they didn't keep watching if you keep watching you'll see that we do have root we're just going to um, do it a better way, I guess you could say. And then enable Android debugging, press OK. It's your preference whether you choose that or not. And then verify apps over USB. It's just something I disable because I took my phone to my computer. I know what I'm doing. So under security, if you want Titanium backup to not give you errors, you'll want to, um, I just uncheck that because I don't like 
my my password showing up when I'm typing it. Uncheck verify apps and check unknown sources and you're good to go there. Now you can install apps from Titania Backup and you will not run into any issues or you shouldn't anyway. So that's just a lot of things I do to fix the root access. We're just gonna open up the browser here and then we're gonna search for something called Super SU. When you pull it up, you just press on it and then you'll go to the XDA thread right here and then you'll scroll down until you see like CWM, Twerp, Mobile Odin, and then a link next to it right here. And then you just press on it. And then it'll take you to this little page right here. When you get here, you'll want to go down to the bottom and you'll want to choose Update Super SU. And then start download. And it's downloading that. It's finished. I accidentally downloaded it twice. That was my bad. I'm going to go ahead and hold down the power button. Choose Reboot to Recovery. Press OK. And this is that advanced reboot feature. I love it. It's pretty freaking awesome. All right, now that you're in here, we downloaded that file, so it'll be on our internal storage. So we'll choose the first option. We'll go to our download folder, and we'll choose SuperSU. Again, I accidentally pressed on it twice, so just ignore that. And yes, install SuperSU. And when that's done, you'll just want to go back, back, choose Reboot System Now. And then when it starts up, it'll say Android is upgrading. We're almost finished, hang in there. Now if you go to your app drawer, there's a new app called SuperSU, and you'll just press on it, and then press OK. No thanks, unless you wanna follow him, which I already am, so that's why I hit no thanks. Go to your settings, and then I recommend unchecking reauthentication. Basically, if you leave it checked, anytime to take a backup or anything that requires root as an update, it'll keep asking you to regrant its uh, root permission. So we're going to uh, go down here until we see this right here. Remember how we hit disabled and some people in my comments freaked out saying, oh, I don't have root. Um, you just uncheck that right there and it'll ignore what we press with disabled and this app will actually handle all the super user related tasks. And then you'll also want to press install super issue backup script. So when you update your nightly tonight or tomorrow night or whenever you update it, you won't have to worry about losing that and having to do it all over again. So now if we open up Titania Backup, it's going to say grant instead of allow, and it will not give you an error saying um, ignore. Uh, again, you'll want to press restore if this is you, but I'm not trying to restore any apps, so I don't have to worry about um, you know Real Racing 3 or whatever going, hey, your Android ID is different. We're not going to restore your data. So hit restore previous ID. Um, see, it says overview, and it doesn't have any apps there. Menu preferences, backup folder location, detect, whole device, and there's the SD card one, titanium backup. So we're just gonna press use current folder, go back, and then when you press reload application, you'll see that now we have the backup and restore tab, and all of our apps with a line through them are ones that are on our SD card but are not installed and we can just press on any of them and then hit restore and it restores it. It's, it's pretty awesome. So you have root, you don't have to worry about Titania Backup. If you do not install SuperSU, Titania Backup is going to give you a warning about your binary, your super user binary and I promise you it's just much better if you go ahead and install SuperSU and you don't use the built-in one like I just showed you. So that's how to back up your phone, um, messages, call logs, contacts, apps, da app data, everything, how to install custom recovery, how to install CyanogenMod, first things I do when I install CyanogenMod, and then how to fix issues like Titania Backup with the unknown sources, developer options, uh, super user binary, how to fix all those issues and it's you know it's it's pretty freaking awesome and you see how smooth and fast this is now that we got rid of TouchWiz and we no longer have anything Samsung on our device. If you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up. If this helped you get SignMod 11 Android 4.4.2 on your Galaxy Note 2 please give this video a thumbs up. I have several other videos on the Galaxy Note 2 if you want to check them out I'll link to my playlist below which has all of my Galaxy Note 2 videos in one place. 
If you want to find out when future videos are going to be uploaded, definitely follow me on Twitter. That's the quickest and easiest way to get a hold of me and learn about new things, Android related, YouTube related, tech related, just anything. So follow me on Twitter. If you don't have one, please create one and please follow me. <laughs> uh, also, I have Instagram where I post daily, um, a little too much actually, but yeah, so follow me on Instagram if you'd like, if you have an Instagram account, and if you don't have an Instagram account, you won't be able to see my pictures because you have to send me a follow request. As soon as I get a notification on advice saying you requested to follow me, I will accept it immediately and, you know, keep moving forward. I also have a gaming channel, youtube.com slash wwjoshdo. I also have a second channel where I upload videos from the front facing camera on whatever device I happen to be carrying around in my pocket at the time. That's youtube.com slash whatwithjoshdu, not D-E-W, D-U. So I have D-E-W, D-U, and D-O. Those are all three my channels, and yeah. In the description, there's a little part that says show more. Please click that to expand the description and see all of the links. If you're not finding something, you probably haven't expanded the description yet. So please do that. If you're new to my channel, please make sure you subscribe. I'll probably never give up the Mighty Galaxy Note 2. I paid $709 for this phone. I can't give up something that I paid that much for. So when CM11.1 or CM12 or uh, when this gets official KitKat or when any updates happen with this phone, I will do my best to cover them with a video. So you'll wanna make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. I also have device. This is carried on too long. This is what would Josh do and I'm out. That was a little bit out of focus because I had it like this, and when I laid it down, it got a little bit out of focus, so sorry about that.